Boy, starting the video off with some big wheels on the truck, and I went and got these obnoxious wheel spikes for literally an 18-wheeler. It's what we have on the toter. I figured if you're going to be a bear, be a grizzly, and I put those on there. I, I'm a little, I don't know how I feel about them just yet. They're going to have to grow on me a little bit, but I think, I think they'll do for now. I think they'll do for now. What we got going on today is Mustang stuff. Can't go wrong with Mustang stuff. You guys know we got Charlie Murphy on kill right now ready to uh ready to go out there and make some power uh, i got some stuff oh hold on is this from from texas late model lmr wait is this lmr late model restoration i don't ben you got your knife on you or does this thing have a way to, no this is like oh, yeah, press firmly to open hold on let's see here this is the last piece of the puzzle, sorry, the second to last piece of the puzzle as far as getting this car drivable goes. Here, there you go. The last piece of the puzzle will be to roll these fenders, which honestly, like if, I, if worst comes to worst in order to put on the dyno, I'll literally use a hammer and do that. But look at this. You know we lowered it. We are hella low. We have some terrible bump steer, and we have the solution to bump steer. Are you you're going thumb? Ben's going thumb here. This is going to be bold. I feel like you could just tear that box apart at any point in time if you really want to. Oh, they got, they got, they knew, they said, Ben's going to open this on camera. We're not going to let him win. Oh, here it goes. Here it goes. <laughs> I feel weird buying Mustang stuff. I just purchased an 88 gear, which is necessity for this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and now we got a bump steer kit for this thing to get uh, better geometry for the front end so we don't die as it goes down track. So we're going to do a little work on this tonight here. I was trying to put it on the dyno. If I get everything done, it's probably going to be, I'd say the dyno is unrealistic, so I'll hit the dyno tomorrow morning. Look at that. That's nice. Yeah. That is nice. That really is nice. QA1 Himes. They're fat too. I mean, that's, that's a pretty pretty Maybe. good unit so what this does is as you lower the car the steering rack obviously is on the k member but the are they the steering arms what are they what's the the, the racks the rack ends yeah the inner tie rods the, the inner tie rods they start going up because everything is getting shoved up in the car so they sit at an angle like this which makes it very unsafe so you put the bump steer kit and as you see here as ben is getting one set up just for display purposes you have all these spacers here so it will actually sit into the spindle right here and lower it to get you a better angle, which is much safer to eliminate the bump steer. The bump steer is like if you come down from a wheelie and it'll wiggle side to side. Uh, also, I think we have, I think we got four lug nuts on every corner of this thing, which is, I think it's all right for what we're doing right now, which is just sitting around the shop. But when we go to the track, probably should look into getting some more lug nuts. Um, yeah, so I got to install that. I'm about to go and get a gear, and we're going to do a gear ratio swap. Um, not going to put the axles and spool in it just yet, because I feel like it doesn't warrant it yet. It has yet to show us any love. And we're not going to show any real love until it runs some numbers. So I got a new laptop, and be able to do some Holly EFI tuning, stuff like that on here. I see, as you guys can see, I got my Holly V... Uh, you can't see there's just a, a gnarly refle reflection i got my v5 and my terminator software right there and um if i can save ben i'm gonna go and get the gear from where's what's it called east coast. east coast gear supply they have an 88 gear in stock they're an hour away i tried to get one from fast lane but they don't have one unfortunately so we'll get it and back. me and you how long do you think it'll take us to put a gear in not that long because we're only we're not having to do like we did the axles in the other car you got like Cut the little bearing, the little things off for the bearings, and yeah, we had to do a lot of shit. And like, it took like the better part of a day, but this just a gear, and if the luck's on our side and the carrier bearings are all good, then we'll just let them be, and we won't pull them off and change them. Then we have to do proper gear break-in, which is you have to drive it for right. for 30 minutes, get it up to temp, then let it cool down for 30 minutes. You have to repeat that 10 times. Well, it'll be lucky if we don't stick the same stuff that comes back out of it. <laughs> right back in there. Uh, more than likely, we'll put a gear in it, we'll drive it down the road, and then we'll stick it right on the dyno. Um, that's that's probably the plan. Not I'm going to say realistic, not going on the dyno tonight, but tomorrow morning, we'll put it on the dyno. We'll put it on the 4x4 
angle. Yeah. Oh, didn't we already do that? We lowered the car. Oh, we did lower the car. We have to reset all that, huh? Yeah. So, yeah, we got... Uh, the plan is to go to the track tomorrow, but tomorrow is Thursday, but it's going to pour. It's going to rain, so I don't think we're going to be going to the track tomorrow. Good, good day to tune the car. It's a good day to tune the car, so that's the plan. Uh, ben has been chipping away on the bad apple, uh, as you guys can see here. Uh, we got the piece ordered. I do want to thank you guys. Uh, I try to make this channel where it's fun, enjoyable. You also can learn something from it, and you guys pay it back. And someone commented and put the link to the part that we need for the Jessel front drive adapter to run your fuel fuel pump. So I literally clicked on that link and ordered it, and everything should be sweet. Ben got some spark plug wires run. And I think we're going to put the coils here. Uh, Maven makes that mount where they, like, they stack like four of them all on top of each other, which will be good right in this corner. So we'll do that. Uh, got the throttle body and throttle linkage on there. You got it on the pedal already. Hold it, Watt. That is perfect. That is really, that is legitimately perfect. So we are just chipping away here. Um, I'd say when you get down to the wiring portion of it, it's not going to be terrible because this car was already wired up for Holly. Like the most what you got to do is like this. This went to the water pump. Like we got to just snake this out. Pull some stuff out of it. Yeah, pull, and, and the rest of the stuff literally is same sensor, same exact plug, just in a different location. So maybe extend some, shorten some. Yeah, I hope to not have to like actually cut any wires and like make them longer. But I gotta undo the, the all the tape, mm -hmm. and like they're probably folded up in there, and like stretch some, yep. and loom it, you know, a little bit of that, a little bit of this. And I would say, other than that, our biggest hurdle, obviously, the the boost control stuff's already all wired up, so we don't have to mess with that. That's a huge bonus. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do have to modify the rails because these billet atomizer injectors yeah. are pretty I'm stout. Torn too, if if anybody knows the the part member or some like the this is like the oil pump so it obviously it can either get mounted to the motor plate or it can get mounted to like these bolts that hold the front plate to the jessel drive but I'm torn between this comes from the pan into the bottom of here but do do we get like we're gonna have to get a remote filter thing do we get like one of the peterson ones that has the little ball end on it for the prime Oh, or do we get like the just the standard like a system one? System one, or like a clear view. Because like, so I learned the clear view stuff with the canister on the bottom yes. is a double filter. Really, the clear view itself is it, a filter, and then it's the, got a disc in it. And then the filter and does the, the, the like, double filter is like the clear view, which is a filter itself. Yep, yeah. and another canister on the bottom. Hmm. But does that have a prime location? That's the thing. See, we don't we don't really have to worry about prime in ours because we're just like the standard LS. They got a melon oil pump. You turn it over a little bit, it pumps some oil through. It doesn't even show up as oil pressure. But you know, a lot of guys that go to the racetrack, you'll see them put a drill with a big extension on it, and they'll literally spin the oil pump over, get some. Yeah, that's for external oil pump stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, I guess that's. Guys, comment below what you, what you need to see. So yeah, so their inlet right is here. Is that the uh, Jason Harris turbo comfortable? Yeah, this thing is just absurdly massive. Yeah, this thing is huge. Yeah, I don't know why it's, it's so be, big. The back yeah. house is gonna be sweating. The back house is gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be hot as shit in there. <laughs> so I mean, everything looks good. This forty five hundred Wilson elbow with this Wilson throttle body. And guys, go out there and buy this combo right here. Buy all three of these. This bracket is the nicest bracket, and makes throttle cable brackets and return spring solutions like the nicest thing out there do you not agree ben yeah it's it's i mean i just i didn't want to cut it yet so i just i zip tied it yeah i just wanted to hit it in there but i didn't want to cut this cable and then end up needing longer later so you kind of have to commit the way the set screw is yeah but I, didn't, I wasn't ready for all that yet, so I just did this. But yeah, this this, like, this bracket takes all of the like ten minutes. The bracket takes all of the thinking out of it. So shout out to Wilson Manifolds for making an absolutely awesome bracket. I'm gonna try to run one on that. Uh, the Holly one has a little adapter right here for it, but it doesn't have anything for your return spring. So you can like put one like you can link it like on here, which I don't think it would be that happy, and then it would it would go like that. But the Wilson stuff, and I, and you can clock this as well, but it's just not, I mean, I guess I can clock it down and have it pull up towards it. 
which would be backwards, so I can't do that. I'd have to like flip it. You'd have to, uh, you'd have I could flip it to the other side. Could. Yeah. I put this one on the other side because that's the way. I don't know. I looked up a picture on their website, and the throw cable is on the bottom. Well, like on that car, it's on the top. So yeah. It doesn't really matter. You could you you could do either or the other car yeah we run this bracket I'm gonna start running this bracket more and more because uh, we run everything by drive by cable but and they sent it raw which is nice because you can have it powder coated or you can paint it yourself or whatever color you want Wilson really knocked it out of the park with that but I gotta go and get a gear we gotta pull this apart and get the gear in the the, the game plan I'd say is if I can get the gear in it and the fenders rolled tonight then we're good for the dyno tomorrow. That'd be that'd be ideal because setting the pinning angle that takes just a minute. Yeah. So, other than that, it's already centered. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you did center it the last time we were under there. We're tripping away, but guys, I do just want to here Ben hop in there and fire it up. Listen to this. Listen to the cold. Th this car's been sitting all day. Cold start. Follow EFI. E85. Cold start. It doesn't get much better than that, huh? I mean, that's just a good, good old fire up. Got a little gauge in there. The fan is an absolute monster. So we're uh, Charlie Murphy's really coming along. It seems to be nice. I love it. I love this car. I'm st it's really starting to turn on me. I, I accidentally said it. I didn't mean to say it, but I'm starting to love this car. Like it's coming around. Might have to keep this one. Might just have to keep it. Ben Ben tells me all the time we need to keep it. Ben, should we keep this one after it runs? It's gonna be a solid car. Oh, is that the cam kit? Yeah. Oh shit, my I didn't even know. I didn't even know. I didn't even know. Did you know? If it came from that cam coffee? kit. Four. For my LT build. If it came FedEx, then I already know why it's out here. Why? Fed, oh yeah, the FedEx guy always is like, yeah. yeah FedEx but... dude just comes in here, drops it, bounces. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's like a, a real FedEx thing too. Like, here's your Listen. stuff. Look at this. Camshaft, head studs, Johnson lifters, valve springs, Texas Speed absolutely hooking it up. Absolutely hooking it up. Cam phaser tool, nuts, mm -hmm. things. Cool. Oh, oh, and we got Slick Boy in the video. Those are? Oh. Those are? Yeah. What are this? Push rods? Push rods. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. Wait. I'm sorry. What? Oh, wait, what? Huh? Huh? What is. Where are they at? Is this a box filler? Dude, hold on. Stop. It's a box filler. Literally? They escaped. No push rods. They are in a truck somewhere. They're definitely in the FedEx truck. Dude. They slipped out the look at corner of this box. That's Literally, box. I kid you not, can't make this up. No push rods. <laughs> I swear to you. Hey, it's a good thing I, I said something because it's on camera. I swear to you, no push. <laughs> we cannot make this up. FedEx, get your shit together. Oh my god. Is this that tool? Yeah, this Alright, we're back. After a Ben, how long was it? Four hour? After a four hour trip to get our 410 gear, we got our 410 gear. East Coast Gear Supply changed locations, and I didn't know that. I went to their first location, which was an hour away, then their second location, which was like an hour away from there, which was then like an hour and a half away from the shop. But we got it. We got our 410 gear. Ben has been working on the Ford Vet, and he's been working on the Bad Apple. And have you been working on the Silverback Z06 too? Yeah. You're working on literally three cars. All right, so here, here's the plan. Here's the game plan for today, for this evening. Ben's already on a mission. Let me guess. You already undid the shift linkage? Yeah. Put it in park. We got to remove the drive shaft, remove tires, which I probably should have done already, and take tires off, take this rear diff cover out, drain the fluid, and we got to pop the C-clip out, right? Yep. And slide each axle out, pull the carrier out, and then we'll be able to put the other gear in. I got to tighten up all of these nuts and bolts in here. All of them. I think these are already tight, but um, most of these on here. And I got some self tappers to put back in the uh, control arm because that's very important. Put self tappers back in the control arm. Um, and I got to put this bump steer kit on. 
which is really nice. So I just got to get some measurements. I watched their video. Ben, how in depth was their video? It was pretty in depth. What was it? SV, is it SVT? S SVE. Yeah. SVE. SVE makes these. These are pretty nice, and uh, they got some. Honestly, like I can't even talk shit. I mean, they are pretty nice. They come with everything you need as well, so you can't you can't knock it. it comes with this one giant nut. Is this? Did this come with it? Oh wait. Oh, this came. I was like, I was wondering what. Oh, all this stuff is for the gear. I was like, what is all these nuts and bolts for? All right, so we got to throw this stuff on and get some measurements, and I'm going to work up front. Ben's going to chip away at the back here a little bit, and we should be moving moving pretty good. I do have to roll the fenders before I put it on the dyno tomorrow, so if anyone's got a wooden baseball bat, I already would have rolled the fenders by now, but I just need to have that. I already discussed with Ben. Might just make a bunch of relief cuts and take a nice little hammer and just tap them up, up there flat. I mean, it can't look that bad. Like some pliers and put like foam on the outside or like a bunch of rags. Just, <laughs> just pinch it up there. Alright guys, we're installing the bump, kit, bump steer kit right now, and uh, here's the, the outer tie rod, and as you can see, we're just getting it to be the same, so when we put this guy in there, that we don't we don't mess up our alignment, and uh, right now we got it, we just measure pretty much center of this, god, you hear that, there's literally a cicada in here that has a saddle on its back, it's that big, it's big, it's, I don't know how it got in here, but it's pissed, it literally sounds like someone getting murdered, you can hear it just tagging stuff, um, we measure uh, center of pretty much this to center of the eyelet here, and that gets us pretty close. Uh, this thing's pretty nice because it's like uh, you just slide it in. You could bolt it on from the top, and uh, no more castle nut, and then um, slap it on the bottom, and it's got a nut on the bottom so it's a little bit uh, i'd say it's pretty nice it's a good upgrade if you're going to lower your s95 it's like 150 bucks and uh, you get the right ride height it's very important to have the bumps to your good so uh super easy to install i mean just grab grab your measurement make sure they're close leave this right where it is so just break it free so it's loose and then leave it where it is where it is or else it's going to mess your whole alignment up Alright guys, so here it is. This is all of our spacing. I mean, honestly, Ben, it's got enough thread on here where you could space it out like another one. Yeah. And you could have it down there. I mean, I can get another spacer, but I mean, look at that. right up there, you tighten that nut down. Yeah, that would be a whole lot better. Yeah, that should uh, that should be pretty good. So I just got to knock the other side out and then we should be good. I got this. Uh, just got to get tightened up. I mean, it looks, it, it looks quite good there. I'm not going to lie. Alright, I'm messing with the front end here. Ben is just tearing apart the rear of this thing got the verification tag and uh we we're stepping up to a 410 gear we did our little gear ratio calculator and what would be ideal 
with no converter slip, zero converter slip, uh, we'd go through the traps at 6,800 RPMs at 140 miles an hour. So it's not gonna go quite 140. So uh, we're gonna have some converter slip. So we'll probably go through the traps at like 7,000 at like maybe 135 mm -hmm. would be pretty good. Ben got the verification tag. And what does it tell you, Ben? It says it is an 8.8. .8. Okay. And it has a 273 year. A two. 73. Now, I don't know if that's 100% what's in there. That's what it came with. That's what it came with. If it's not here, then that's, well, that's what it is. A 273. Yeah. Regardless, it, it feels like a 330. It just feels super long. Yeah, it might, it might be a 273. It might be a 273. Who knows? But that is not, that is not the correct gear for what we're looking for. No. That's, that's way off. That is way off. Oh, hey, was I supposed to paint these lower control arm brackets? Because I never did. Uh... What if I don't? I'm not really worried about it. Yeah, it won't, won't hurt nothing. So, I mean, we're just chipping away here. Um, yeah, that's that's wild. That's wild. So, it's going to be a lot more snappier down low. Hey, it's going to be the Wheelie King, is it not? It could, be. it could potentially be the Wheelie King. <laughs> All right, Ben uh, is pulling this thing out. I'm about done. I'm just finishing up my last little one over there. I just got to put the... the Nut on the bottom. We'll get a little time lapse of Ben having fun back here. It smells like Fido's ass. It smells disgusting. We have suspicions that the gear has been changed. It looks like someone's been in here, which is, is probably suspected. I don't know who would be racing on a 273, but it definitely is a long gear for sure, like 100%. So we are, uh, we're gonna get some action in this gear here shortly. We have a bear 8.8. Eight. We've got a bear 8.8. Eight. She's stuffed in there and uh, she's naked now. So everything's all knocked out of it. Your axle seal's not leaking? No, I mean, listen, I got no complaints from the, the old trusty 8.8 eight here. Yes or no to weld the diff? I don't know. These, it's like if you weld it, you're like, I don't know how long it's going to last after this or if it's gonna come undone. I guess it just depends on what kind of shape these clutches are in. Yeah, I mean, could suck to put it back together and start doing one tire burnouts. Right, but at the same time, you're on, as soon as you weld it, you're on borrowed time. Because it's gonna break eventually. It's gonna break, and it's like all that heat and warpage goes into your new gear setup. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like these clutches are in good shape. I mean, they're tight. All right, well, let's just trust it. Yeah, we'll let's trust it. Let's not overdo it. Uh, just like the springs. You know, Shan's like cut one out. I'm like, no, I'll cut one and a half where we really should just try it. Like, let's trust it. Yeah, we'll trust it because these things look like they're in good shape and there wasn't that much metal in there too and they look kind of new, so. And they're, I mean, they're tight. That spring is tight. Yeah, I mean, that's, you can take that to the bank. Yeah. Um, so I got the bump steer kit all wrapped up in the front. And the front's all done and knocked out. When we set it back down, we'll just make sure we'll drive it around, make sure it drives good. Uh, I just got an alignment done on it, and then I did this and lowered it and all that. So I probably should have done that before. I can tell you right now, Ben, it's gonna be a bitch getting it on the dyno. Yeah. It's it's kind of low now, you know. And the, have to turn these guys up, like to take up a little bit, a little bit of the like, just at least the slack, you know. I feel like that's that won't raise it up anymore. Oh god, yeah. Just just going four turns or er, uh, four turns raises it up like half an inch. 
Really? You're talking about the, the spring coming off the... Yeah. Well, the only saving grace is... It's like it the, doesn't touch anything until it gets to like there. The only saving grace is that top piece generally falls and it stays centered. Right. You know? So, we're, we're going to have to have travel limiters on it, 100%. Yeah. So, uh, that's, that's just something that we need. We need travel limiters. Yeah. Um, so, I think that's going to wrap up today's video. Just doing some old maintenance. We're trying to get ready for the track. I do have to swap this wastegate. It has to be swapped. Um, it's got in it. I took it out. And, uh, yeah, and this, this top piece is just chilling here. It's not yeah. plugged up. This is the one that was leaking into the manifold. So, uh, my, my boy Timmy, he's actually working a storm for me. Um, he had one, and I stole it. So, I need to get this off tomorrow, and I need to take all the plugs out of it, put all the plugs in the new one, and put the new one on there, and then we should be good. Oh, uh, we could have even better... Even better duct tape. I mean, dude, it didn't get over 170 degrees. Look over here. Oh God, look at this. Is it completely sealed. It would probably would. It probably it'd be 32 degrees. <laughs> it it start to freeze. Yeah. It would go under. I mean, other than that, everything is looking pretty good here. We got everything all sealed up nice. I mean, that's half the battle. Yeah. It's just sealing everything. This this right here, it's still leaking, and I'm not putting any dome pressure on it. How hard does it hit the two step? It's gonna hit it faster once this one's on there. It's doing it like I kind of expected it to be before we realized that we had a bunch of issues. Yeah, well, we've just been, we're almost done fixing stuff. Mm -hmm. So how's my bump steer kit install look? Good. I mean, everything looks, it looks pretty zesty, I'm not gonna lie. Pretty excited about this. So tomorrow I gotta go and get brake clean and shop towels so we can clean out the rear end housing before we install everything. And I gotta get gear oil. We have everything else to install it, so we'll get that thrown in tomorrow morning. And then uh, to break the gear in, we'll put it right on the dyno, and we'll make some pulls and see how she does. Uh, I'll switch the wastegate out up here, and uh, Ben will get that uh, that gear all set up. And it should set up pretty good, right? Yeah. Because, I mean, it was already all set up before, huh? Well, yeah, well, we're resetting it up, but I got a trick. You could go and just take the uh, two shims that come in it and just flip-flop them, and generally speaking, it'll wind up perfect. How many 88s have you built? A lot. Yeah. A bunch. A bunch. A bunch. So, uh, we're just chipping away here. This thing should be ready to roll this weekend. It should, uh, I mean, one thing I do want to do is, I think it's got a bump, does it have a bump box set up in it, or? It's got, yeah. It's I and mean, we could do it works. through the, is it set up through the holly? Yeah, it works. We just need to switch the, the trans brake and the bump box. Yeah. Because right now you'd have to use two hands to, like, It'd just be unsafe, so, I mean, we're chipping away.